Lamar Jackson is the favorite to win the NFL's Most Valuable Player Award, but that wasn't always the case. In fact, he had the sixth best odds to start the season, behind Burrow, Mahomes, Allen, Herbert, and Hurts. It seems like the world forgot this guy was named MVP not too long ago in 2019. You see, throughout his career, he has had to fight tooth and nail to prove that he deserves more than just the hype. In today's video, we look into the rise of Lamar Jackson, the three-star recruit who became an NFL superstar. Frenzies, let's dive in. At this point, we all know Jackson's up there as the third highest paid NFL player ever. But what you probably don't know is that Lamar has one of the most humble beginnings you'll ever find in the NFL. So to get where he is today, that guy had to hustle harder than someone chasing an ice cream truck on a hot summer day. Born to Felicia Jones and Lamar Jackson Sr. on January 7, 1997, Lamar had a pretty rough start in life. For starters, he was born and brought up in the center of the poverty-stricken part of Pompano Beach, Florida. But you know what they say, even diamonds are found in slums. And young Lamar was a shining example, especially when he hit the football field. Both his parents saw this too, so they stopped at nothing to make sure that their son got everything he needed to dazzle, especially his dad. By the time he turned eight, young Lamar could comfortably throw a football 20 yards when kids his age were still struggling with their math homework in elementary school. With his parents by his side, Lamar was unstoppable. Unfortunately, life had other plans. In 2005, Jackson lost his dad to a sudden heart attack. And as if that wasn't already devastating enough to shake his entire world up, his grandmother also died that tragic day. After his dad died, Jackson and his three siblings had to depend on their mother, Felicia, for everything. And boy, did she step up to the challenge. Felicia didn't just take care of her family. She did everything to make sure her four kids had it all, even if it meant rolling up her sleeves to coach Lamar. And when your mom is your coach, you better believe you're getting the ultimate, no-nonsense training package tailor-made for NFL stardom. That's exactly what Lamar got. In high school, Jackson wasn't just a one-trick pony. He was an outstanding quarterback, but he also had his eyes set on the track, where he clocked in a personal record of 11.45 seconds in the 100-meter dash. Expectedly, his track skills translated seamlessly onto the field. Lamar's running game on the field was just as impressive as his arm. The guy could sprint and sling the ball like a pro. In fact, he was so fast that his high school coaches eyed him for a switch to wide receiver or defensive back but they couldn't because his mom had the final say and insisted that he remained a quarterback. Jackson would go on to prove that his mom's decision was spot on. During his two year stint at Boynton Beach, Jackson became a high school sensation, tossing 2,263 yards and securing 31 touchdowns while keeping interceptions low at just nine. His versatility shone through as he also sprinted for 1,624 yards, notching an impressive 22 touchdowns on the ground. All this while maintaining a solid quarterback rating of 102.7. Now, you'd think that such an astounding portfolio for a high schooler would earn Lamar heaps of attention and respect, but it didn't quite happen like that. Well, attention came pouring in, but respect, not so much. Despite his undeniable talent and mind-blowing results, both ESPN and 24-7 Sports tagged Lamar as a mere three-star recruit. More specifically, ESPN had Jackson as just the 80th best player in Florida. Lucky for Lamar, his performance on the field came through for him. So, despite the underwhelming ratings from recruiting companies, offers flooded in from Power 5 giants as well as mid-major programs. Out of the numerous offers, Jackson narrowed down his visits to just four schools. And in the end, it was the University of Louisville that won him over after head coach Bobby Petrino promised Lamar's mom that her son would have the quarterback position secured and nothing less. And just like he has always done, Lamar proved that he was worth the shot. In his first year at Louisville, Jackson made some serious waves. Through the air, he completed 135 passes out of 247 attempts and racked up 1,840 yards with 12 touchdowns and 8 interceptions but what really stood out were his legs. Lamar scrambled for an amazing 960 yards, scoring 11 rushing touchdowns. By the end of the season, he not only threw for 227 yards and two touchdowns, but also set a Music City Bowl record by tearing up the field for a mind-blowing 226 rushing yards and added two more touchdowns to his name. In such a short period of time, Jackson had done a spectacular job showing everyone who doubted him that they were wrong. 
but he wasn't done just yet. Jackson launched into the next season with an absolute bang, setting another university record by notching eight total touchdowns, all in the first half of the very first game of his sophomore year. Game after game, Lamar continued to prove himself as a mega force on the field, and by the end of that season, he was selected as the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner over very tough competition. And with that, he became Louisville's first Heisman Trophy winner in school history and the youngest ever recipient of the award at the age of 19 years and 337 days. Continuing his streak of excellence, Lamar delivered another stellar performance in the 2017 season. His outstanding sophomore campaign earned him the Adidas High Performance Male Athlete of the Year Award, further solidifying his status as a standout talent at Louisville. And on January 5, 2018, he announced that he would enter the 2018 NFL Draft. Despite consistently delivering electrifying performances from high school through college, certain draft pundits continued to cast doubts on Lamar's quarterback abilities. Some even suggested that he ditch the quarterback position and pivot to wide receiver. But did that make Lamar doubt himself or give up on his quarterback dreams? You can bet a million dollars that it didn't. Jackson was as focused as a laser beam. Jackson was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the first round with the 32nd overall pick in the draft after trading up for the selection with the Philadelphia Eagles. And like always, he didn't disappoint. Jackson made his NFL debut, relieving starting quarterback Joe Flacco in the second half of a 47-3 victory against the Buffalo Bills, finishing with 24 passing yards and 39 rushing yards in the season opener. But it was in November of that same year that Jackson truly seized the spotlight. With Flacco sidelined due to injury, Jackson made his first NFL start against the Cincinnati Bengals, and what a show it was. He completed 13 of 19 passes for 150 yards with one interception and rushed for 117 yards. This remarkable feat not only secured a 24-21 victory, but also etched Jackson's name into Ravens history books for the most rushing yards by a quarterback in a single game. Throughout the rest of the season, Jackson would go on to start seven games, shouldering the Ravens to an impressive 6-1 record. Once again, Lamar had outdone himself so much that the Ravens decided to overhaul the entire offensive strategy that was designed for Joe Flacco and create a new offensive strategy that was perfectly tailored to maximize Lamar's extraordinary abilities ahead of the 2019 season. And honestly, he was worth the shot. By the end of the year, Lamar was voted the MVP of the season. The 2020 season started off on a great note with Lamar being named the AFC Offensive Player of the Week due to his performance in the Ravens' 38-6 victory against the Browns. But it wasn't just a hot start. Jackson kept that momentum going and ended the season with his first ever playoff win. Despite throwing for 179 yards with one interception, it was his electrifying 136 rushing yards and a touchdown that sealed the deal in the 20-13 win. Unfortunately, Jackson was knocked out of the 2021 season after he suffered an ankle injury in Week 15, missed the remainder of that game, and, ultimately, the rest of the season. But as soon as Jackson was back out on the field for the 2022 season, it was pretty clear that he was one of the biggest threats in the NFL. However, after suffering a PCL sprain in Week 13, he never saw the field again that season. Now, if there's something Lamar has always shown us, it's that he has everything it takes to bounce back. With injury-plagued seasons the last two years, the Ravens needed a healthy Lamar for the 2023 season. Well, he's back healthy and dominating the league. Baltimore has the best record in the AFC, a first-round bye, and Lamar playing at an MVP level once again. So when it comes to Lamar Jackson, no amount of hating will keep him from touching the sky. So there you have it, frenzies. What's your take on Lamar Jackson and his journey in the NFL so far? Let us know in the comments.